So you've probably been wondering where I've been all week since I'm a pretty regular YouTube poster and I have been working on the back garden. Got a pretty big project on the go at the moment. There's been a lot of prep, a lot of demolition work and soon a lot of building work. And it's keeping me pretty busy along with the gardening and I don't have as much time right now to make YouTube videos. So probably the rate of videos might drop down a bit, maybe to you know the gardening week video at the weekend and be one midweek or something like that. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So I thought for change, we do the harvest first and then we'll get on to the gardening. Just because it's such a lovely harvest table this week and uh, I've done it the way you, you don't normally see it like this where we've kind of boxed it up uh, ready for delivery uh, to our family. You always normally see just like the raw ingredients so it'll just make a little bit of a change for you and it is one of those harvests where you know we've kind of lots of firsts like the first time we've got such an abundance of cherries that we can share them with other people instead of just eating them fresh every day for ourselves you know enough first cucumbers actually and enough uh, tomatoes kind of for eating fresh so we're kind of finally self-sufficient in tomatoes enough courgettes that were kind of overwhelmed <laughs> with courgettes. Anyway, let me just sort of take you through the details. So these are the little root boxes that we make up. So we've got potatoes, uh, red beetroot and golden beetroot and turnips in those. And we've got loads of those, six I think, six or seven of those. Uh, just a sample of the stored produce boxes. So we've got garlic, red onions and white onions. I don't have any space to put those out, but they're not fresh harvested anymore because we're all those are in the store. Loads of boxes of what I think of as stir fry greens, but people use them for all sorts of things. So spinach and chard, and there's more boxes up there. Um, a couple of full head uh, of celery, which are looking quite nice. And I'm trying to make a bit of space, so I'm taking those out. Um, I've got loads of celery left. Just some uh, dedicated boxes of potatoes. We've harvested a few extra potatoes than we normally do this week just because um, they are first earlies and I want to get them out of the ground really. Uh, first of the one ball courgettes. Uh, first of the amethyst uh, purple French beans. We've had French beans for ages but uh, they're the first of the amethyst. So I've made up then lots of boxes of courgettes and uh, French beans and broad beans. So they're looking, I think, really lovely. Um, a couple of leeks just for Debbie and I, just the summer leeks. Obviously we've got loads and loads of leeks and you'll see some of those later on in the video. Um, what else have we got? Oh yes. These are the leafy brassica boxes. So they're gorgeous with all these little red cabbages in them. Uh, and I've got six of those. Um, these are the salad onion tops to go into the salad mixes. And then we've got the kind of flowering brassica boxes, but we don't quite have enough flowering brassica boxes to fill the box. So there's peas, and carrots in those, but absolutely gorgeous, these purple cauliflowers. We don't have a huge number of them. You know, I think we've only got four in total uh, to pick over the next two weeks. But anyway, they're really nice. So it's six of those. Little salad carrots, I showed you the tomatoes, but there's a good little crop of tomatoes there. I actually, I've got more to pick, but I can't use any more than that in a week. So um, I'm just leaving the rest on the plant. And as I said, the first two cucumbers and obviously lots more of those to come. And yeah, I don't normally show the fruit because we pick it on the day and kind of use it on the day in fruit salads and things like that. But anyway, we've got blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, and cherries right now. I think that's everything that we've got in terms of fruit. Oh no, gooseberries. Yes, I started picking gooseberries as well today, but I ate those all fresh. And then I've got 
Moj's two peas to go in the salad mixes. And also another first in the salad mixes, the golden purslane has arrived. This is my favorite uh, salad leaf in summer. Absolutely scrumptious. And uh, yeah, well, one of my kids said that uh, it tastes like apple peel. I don't know whether that's good or bad, but I love it anyway. So, oh, and beetroot leaves there. So that is a pretty nice harvest. I'm very pleased with that one. I'm going to get that boxed up, but first I'm just going to get these salads all prepared. So I'll show you those once they're finished. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm ready for a rest. Debbie's is on a short break in London right now with some of the kids. So um, yeah, I'm on my own harvesting veg and enjoying it quite a lot. So we've had a few showers and the ground is nice and moist so it's perfect timing for watering in the fruit and veg protection nematodes so i thought i'd take you around to show you all the different veggies that you can use it for and the pests that it kills and just talk about the technique that i use for applying it so let's get started so first off it comes in this new packaging with less waste which is great and it generally lasts for about a month so this has arrived on the 20th and it's going to expire on the 14th so um, you've got to keep it in the fridge i got two packets and uh, i want to get it applied as quickly as possible because it only really lasts for two weeks um, so you have to keep on applying it so it's quite a big financial commitment but uh, it's worth it for us because we harvest so much i just mix it in to this water butt and so I've got about, I don't know, 150 litres, something like that in there. So I find it's a real faff to keep on measuring it out. So because it's just mixed in to the water in the water bottle, it just makes it really easy to uh, apply it nice and evenly. So I'm going to start with the brassicas. And I'm mainly focused on the long-lived ones. I'm not going to bother with these red cabbages because they're really well established now. And even if they've got cabbage root fly, you know, they've probably still um, got big enough root systems to cope. So I'm going to do these collets uh, because obviously these are going to last a very long time and those will still sprout. Hi. Hi. So I'm just giving each one you know, sort of a similar sort of amount, like five seconds or something like that. So you really need to use a nice coarse rose. So hopefully that's any cabbage root fly dealt with. So next on my list of priorities are the main crop onions. And I'm giving these a really good soak because, you know, this is such a devastating problem, onion fly. There's not many pests that will wipe out your whole crop. So next I'm going to do the carrots. So these are the winter and spring carrots. And I've had to switch to a finer rose, which will probably block up a little bit. But I find the coarse rose, it just knocks the carrots down to the ground too much. So hopefully, that's the carrot root fly sorted and I, I think it's important with a critical crop like carrots especially for winter and spring carrots to uh, belt and braces it you know so make sure you've got nets and nematodes 
because you know the carrot root fly has got a lot of time to be eating those carrot roots if it does get in here and you do have to weed <laughs> and I've recently weeded this bed so I'm kind of slightly nervous that uh, carrot flies got in there so next up are the summer and autumn carrots and these aren't far off being ready actually but I've got some in containers as well I'll treat those and the ones in containers are really high up you know they're up on top of one of my IBC tanks but uh, they have still got a little bit of evidence of carrot root fly so it's complete rubbish that carrot root fly can't fly above one meter and it might look nice and sunny but it is nearly eight o'clock at night so that's why I'm doing it now ideally when you're applying nematodes it's best to do it I think in the evening some of these have gone to seed so I'm doing shallots and the parsnips now and for the shallots we're protecting against onion fly and the parsnips against carrot root fly carrot root fly they do affect parsnips it's not as devastating because they only kind of burrow into the very surface and you often can easily peel that off but uh, yeah it's nice having them interplanted because you get both crops treated with one dose and I've just got these few more onions to do and the downside to nematodes I always think is that you've got to keep the beds moist for it to work but then the upside is that your veggies like being in a bed that's kept moist and then this is the last brassica bed that I'm doing I'm not going to bother doing things like the calabrese because again it's not going to really affect anything but I will do the cabbages and the collets. So we have got sawfly on these gooseberries and so again you can use it on these and the downside <laughs> it's pretty tricky to use because you've got to get it on the underside of the leaves and it only works if it actually comes into contact with the sawfly. Um, well with the sawfly larvae which is you know it's tricky to do really and get good coverage but you know you can do some you can do something you can also use it for cutworms if you've got any cutworm problems but right now this time of year we don't tend to have cutworm problems it tends to be in autumn and spring so I don't generally do things like lettuce which always suffer badly from cutworms until later on in the season and that is pretty much it I think for everything that I'm treating today so it's pretty versatile a bit time consuming but uh, you know I think it's worth it for me I just hate losing crops you know and uh, it costs me maybe a hundred pounds or something like that in total for the slug nematodes and the and these uh, fruit and veg protection nematodes but you know that's about one percent of my harvest value I always try and convert everything into a percentage of harvest value and make sure that I'm not spending more than sort of 10 percent of harvest value on everything well I'm taking a break from demolition work we filled the skip and uh, whilst we wait for another skip to arrive I'm going to sort these shallots out and unfortunately most of them have gone to seed so 
I think I'm just going to compost those because we've got a lot of onions and we've got a lot of shallots and they haven't gone to seed in other places so there just doesn't seem to be a lot of point kind of going to the effort of trying to make something of these that uh, have gone to seed and since I'm chopping my onions up and may turn in the compost bin I thought I might as well clear this whew, all that pollen this bed of spinach so this is Mikado and this is my late spinach I don't grow uh, true spinach after this uh, until autumn or for harvest in autumn but this is really easy to get out just a quick twist and it leaves the bed pretty clear just uh, yeah a lot of pollen anyway I'm gonna get all this chopped up quite fond of chopping things up this uh, wood chip bed of compost wood chip bay of compost rather has devoured so many greens in the last two or three weeks since it's been active it's running at about 70 degrees really hot the greens just don't stand a chance i must have incorporated at least the same volume as of this bin in greens in uh, the last two or three weeks and you can see the wood chip actually becoming you know quite a nice consistency already given that it's only as i say two or three weeks old it's really quite remarkable and every time i add greens obviously i'm adding moisture as well but the wood really likes to be nice and moist so I'm not actually having to water it at the moment so this is going to be the leak bed and it's right now the very dry bed so uh, those onions well shallots mainly have taken a huge amount of water out of this bed over the last month or so they really haven't been watered very much even in this extremely hot weather so basically having to give it a couple of watering cans maybe three watering cans per square meter and even that probably isn't enough because there's not a lot of point watering unless you're going to get down to the root zone and so now I'm just going to lock all that moisture in with this well lotted farmyard manure and this pad's going to be brassicas next year after the leeks I'm actually going to interplant these leeks with salad onions as well and uh, yeah so it's going to be like this spread here so I'm quite pleased with that so I've got enough uh, 32 holes there and each bunch of leeks is four so roughly 120 uh, leeks hopefully should be harvesting from there and that will be enough really uh, to see us through uh, from autumn until spring so uh, pretty happy with that and I'm going to put as I said at each of these centres I'm just going to put a little bunch of salad onions because they'll only be in there for a couple of months and by the time the leeks have bulked up uh, the salad onions will have gone so I'm going to pre-water the holes and I'm going to come back tonight I'm going to plant the leeks. So there we go. So that's uh, prepared again. Just the same with um, well rotted, sta uh, not stable, farmyard manure. And 
I'm going to put lettuces in here and then I'm going to put salad onions for winter and early spring and then brassicas in spring. I've just got to harvest these potatoes next to me and then I'll kind of just carry on with some more lettuce so probably. So I'm just harvesting the garlic down the edge of the brassica bed and it's got a bit of rust. It's at the point where if I don't take it out now it's probably going to start splitting. I'm pretty pleased with it though. It doesn't take up much space down the edge here. It doesn't get in the way of anything. It's easy to harvest it. I've had a really nice crop of garlic this year. I've actually grown it in a dedicated bed for a change as well and that made a big difference to the size. I'll show you it all later. So there we go, we're all done. Leeks are in, uh, salad onions interplanted. Very happy with this. I did do a dedicated video all about this as well if you want some more details. So I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel and I'll see you soon.